I have someone amazing with us and uh, you should see her profile. She's like, you must have heard of serial entrepreneurs, but she is a serial magazine launcher. Right from the concept to design, she does amazing work. Let's welcome Mrs. Ratna Rao onto our show and she's an uh, editor for War Magazine. Not just that, that she's, a, she's an author for this book. It's a book of short stories called as The Purple Story. Purple Lotus and uh, you have uh, the magazines which she also is an editor is for House Calls, uh, Nari and Pink Connection. An amazing portfolio. Ratna, thank you so much oh, for being pleasure. with us today. So how did you end up in the profession like writing? You know like uh, before generation everyone is, was either a doctor or a lawyer or an IT guy. So how come you chose this this as a profession? No, I all even when I was in school, I'd love writing essays. I'd write copiously, but we didn't have counselors, so I really didn't know what I was going to do with my writing skills. And uh, my, in fact, my dad, who's a banker, said you must be, join the bank, which I, I would have died <laughs> <laughs> if I was ever in a bank. So he thought then I should become a it, get into uh, be a professor or a lecturer or something I said I hate teaching and so I, I, I said I would never do so then we moved to Calcutta and there I started my career I mean uh, so that's how I got into journalism as such awesome. but I did, really didn't know how I was going to use my writing skills I could have been an author straight away or you know right but journalism seemed like the thing to do those days but there was no IT by the way when I was doing it was oh, all no medicine engineering. Engineering, engineering of course was a big there. thing yeah right, right. I always loved the English language I loved the language I can't tell you how much and I was a copious reader so this seemed like a natural progression to that another thing is uh, during those times like most of the people used to listen to the parents and do whatever they were told like from coming from a banker father if you chose something like writing it's something where, where to find a publisher for a book in those days was a big thing. Yeah, See, nowadays yeah. everyone is a self-published author. Yeah. But coming from that background, how did you make the choice? So that's why I chose journalism, where I could see my work being published. Mm. And then as, when I started meeting people, I've met like amazing people from Nobel chairmen for house calls. Then I've met Mother Teresa. So then I got interested. Also, it was a people thing. It's not just about writing and how you know how you interview somebody. All those were skills I had to learn. Because my degree was in English, a master's in English from Osmania, not in journalism. I went much later, I had a scholarship, I went to the US to study. And that gave me immense confidence there, because I was really the best in English in the class. They'd say, oh, let's ask this Indian girl <laughs> the meaning of this word. Wow. So, I think US prepared me for a lot of things, like I, I was telling you what happened. Right. So, yeah. from when did you become an editor? Editors so with House Calls, I think, the first thing. So, House Calls, uh, it, what is Dr. Reddy's wanted me to join them. Then I said, I'm not into corporate communication where they sort of hmm. sugarcoat everything. I'm, I'm like an outspoken journalist. <laughs> you know, that's what I want to do. So, then they said, what do you want to do? So, I said, I launch a magazine for you. They said, but doctors don't have the time to read magazines. I True. said, leave that to me. <laughs> and then it's so, uh, it, it was so popular. In fact, we closed it a few years ago. It was their choice, not my choice. Mm -hmm. So many people wrote to us saying that it was like, you know, a welcome member of the family. So uh, after house calls, how did WOW happen? This all part of the Dr. Reddy's family. So there was this friend of mine, okay. Deepthi. Huh. So she said, let's do something for Hyderabad. She's also from New York and all that. So right. she wanted to do something. And there were no magazines except Channel True. 6 those days. Hmm. One of the things, maybe I don't know if I should put it on record, was to buy Channel 6. Okay. I said, forget it, we'll launch our own brand. <laughs> Where do you want to spend money? Spend the money in design for this. Right. And so I put a team together. We used to take her to the press to sh you know, show her what GSM was, you know, paper thickness, everything. Wow. So that's how we launched. But initially, after launching, I, I was not the editor because I was so busy with house calls for which I used to travel across the country. It was much later that I became the editor of Wow Hyderabad. In fact, I didn't want. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Wow was a trained blazer in yeah, entire was, Hyderabad. Was, you know, yeah. like even the concept. Yeah. Will, it, will it even work? No, when we launched, I said, what are we going to write, Deepthi? Every month after month, a nightlife, a restaurant. Sure enough, as we, you know, grew, Every day there's a restaurant opening, nightclub opening. I mean, they were like, you know what it was, Hyderabad. Right. There was just Taj Banjara, maybe right. Green Park at that point. There was nothing. Ten Downing like, Street. Ten Downing. That was height of <laughs> nightlife. <laughs> That's like, <laughs> yeah, that was the thing. So, yeah. but strangely, I think we probably caught the pulse at that point. Mm. I think IT was just coming up. Mm. Mr. Naidu was, mm. you know, uh, developing this part of the town. I think the timing was good. In anything I tell, <clears throat> tell my staff also, timing is important. 
timing yeah. is such a... I think the timing for WOW was just right. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, we have several imitators <laughs> who are nowhere close. Yeah, so, but though there are a lot of people who have come up, the uh, the standard which WOW has set yeah. for the city of Hyderabad itself yeah. is like yeah. way up there. Yeah, uh, thank you. How has your journey been as a mother? You straight to a jump to a mother. <laughs> See, my really my passion is writing, journalism, and then I had two kids in between. And the nice thing about writing was I could also freelance. This was before I moved to Hyderabad and, you know, took up these jobs. I was always writing, even like by the time my daughter was like six months or something, I was going around interviewing Shankar Nag and Arundhati Nag, in fact. One, one of the earliest That's people. exactly why I asked this question, because you travel all over the country to take these, these interviews. Yeah. So with kids, how did you manage? Uh, both the things like being a writer, traveling and... Those days, no, I was with society. I was a South India correspondent for society. So I didn't have to travel that travel much. much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, if, if any mother wants to take up a job as a writer or if she wants to write her own book, uh, do you think this is a good profession to be in? There's no money. There's no money. <laughs> My younger brother who is a banker, he's much richer than I am. They, I mean, people come for the glamour and things like that, but it's not at all a paying job. Mm. Unless you are like, you know, I don't mm. know who. What about job satisfaction? That's immense, but you have to really love the job. You mm. really have to. I mean, even now I wonder, I mean, it's, I mean, I don't even, because you were saying, why don't you retire and take mm. it easy? I don't want to. <laughs> I just love it so much. That keeps you alive. You know, this is what keeps you alive. In fact, I want to tell mothers, don't give up anything for your kids. I mean, adjust your priorities because see, like my kids have left home. So if I had given up my writing, I, I don't know what I would have done now. So True. don't give up anything. Just, you know, prioritize, do this, plus do that also. Mm. Kids will grow up, I mean, they are resilient, they'll grow up and move on. So you need to have a life. So there's no point saying, oh, I gave up everything for my kids. Well, who told you to give up everything for your kids? Don't. Don't. They, they will grow. I mean, pay attention to them. I'm not saying neglect and go around, but take care of your career or your interests. It doesn't matter, it could be music, writing. It's such a wonderful thing coming from you, Ratna, because, uh, you know, people of your age tell uh, younger moms, oh, kids are everything, you need to give up everything and take care of the child, you'll miss those moments. That's, that's the conditioning that the it's society okay, no. is doing to the mother. <laughs> yeah, so don't do it, don't <laughs> listen to anybody, especially a mother-in-law. Mother. Especially a mother. Yeah, mother. yeah. Don't listen because you need a life. I mean, what? They start going to college by 18, 19. Then what do you do? What are you supposed to be doing? Then you start nagging your husband, you nag your kids. And then I, this is another thing I don't like about certain moms because they've devoted all their lives. They try to emotionally blackmail. You know, I'm waiting for you. Don't wait. Who told you to wait? I mean, I just go and eat by myself. If my kids don't come also. I mean, it's okay. You know, I need to take care of myself. It sounds selfish, but I feel unless I take care of myself, I cannot be a good human being. You know, I need to do things for other people as well. What you're saying is, is exactly what we at Million Moms are trying to promote. We're telling mothers, hmm. kids will grow up, Kere. but what about you? Kere. What about your health? health? What about your life? Health what about your yeah. confidence? And if you're putting everything onto someone else... I think people do. Yeah, and that, that's the norm. And then they start expecting out of them. Don't expect, I don't expect my kids to, you know, even take me for a movie, but it's nice if, I, if they come with me. Right. But don't have these expectations. Because you've devoted so much of your life, you think they should take care of you when you're older. No, mm. they'll have their life. Kids go. I've seen my kids. So can you talk about your kids? My daughter, she's called Meenakshi. She's married and she's in the US. She's a screen playwriter actually. Wow. She used to work with DQ and uh, this uh, green animation, one of these animation companies. Now she freelances and she's had a baby recently. And then I realized, I said, my God, did I do this much for my kids? Because <laughs> I realized it's a lot of work. It's babies. a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. I never realized. Mm. So I was just talking to a friend yesterday and probably we've forgotten. We've forgotten and uh, uh, especially for some a mom nowadays, it's too much more. Yeah, I was going to talk about that yeah, as well. There's like, too much. There's nothing like I wrote in one of my editorials. There's nothing like instinctive parenting. We thought, you know, if the kid had a cough, we knew, you know, you could give some medicine. But now the, my daughter will look at apps. He said, "Oh, mom, she, he's having a growth spurt. That's why he's restless. He's not sleeping at night." So she goes by these apps and moms groups. We didn't. I think I suppose we just had a grandmother. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Grandmother or Max and aunt. aunt to talk yeah. to. <laughs> or our instinct. We right, knew the right. baby would. And I'm now with, right. with the kind of distractions that kids are exposed to. Much older kids you mean? In, in, even younger kids. I have mothers who are who have kids like one and a half, two year old who say the kids are addicted. To what? Mobiles and phones and devices. Like one and a half, two year old kids are addicted. And if they don't give it, the kids, kids cry so bad. Throw tantrums. And yeah, they throw tantrums and they don't know how to manage that. 
So in those days you didn't have any of those issues. No. Yeah. Now we would just leave kids to play by themselves. That is when I grew up. I will keep writing about that several times. You know, Hyderabad was a different city. We'd go hiking to Golconda all the way from Srinagar Colony, and then parents just left us. There were no classes. We didn't have to do go horse riding or learn painting or anything like that. They just left it. You know, and that's how we invented. I I wrote a play when I was a little kid because I was so bored. <laughs> And then we used to put up stage plays. We used to do fun things like that. But then it's a different world now. Like you said, there's so many distractions of television, and you know, my mom. Uh, I don't remember seeing my mom much because she was a very busy dentist. Mm. And uh, my my in my home, I think I had my uh, nanama. Both my parents were very very busy. I have never seen them. But when it comes to me, they say you have to take care of the child. You are responsible. So were you traumatized? So people believe. That <laughs> the parents, are you traumatized? <laughs> I'm not as much as I am. Very happy the way I grew up yeah, because yeah. I'm very independent. I'm independent. independent I'm independent and I know how to get things done. Yeah. Even so as a child, yeah. I knew how to get ready to school. I never waited for my That's mom right. to come and get me ready. That concept yeah. didn't exist in my mind. Oh. Uh, for me, I I used to wake up, get ready, go to school, come back home, do so. the homework. It it was as simple as that. But now it is a picture which the community yeah. gives. No. Oh, she's not there. The yeah. child will get spoiled. I didn't get no, spoiled. No, they traumatized. They <laughs> traumatized. <laughs> The lack of attention and all of that. I feel too much. I think too much attention. Too also. much attention is a bigger danger than not having attention. Not having. Like you said, you so resilient. You, you know, you learnt several things. So, what do you have to say about uh, the helicopter parenting, which is there right now, where every move of the kid gets monitored and I, every I just, decision is like. Well, I I don't have the energy to monitor. <laughs> I don't think so. Which means you don't have a life of your own. Go get a life. I mean, you know, do something different. First, you are interested. Meet your friends. We are not talking of this. Uh, what do you call this? Kitty thing? parties. Kitty parties. I'm not talking of mm. that. Even that. I mean, I'm not saying why not. Maybe mm. you know, you need to bond with other women. So mm. it's okay. And uh, I see all these women. They go back by four, so that they they are there for the kids by four o'clock. Right. Or whatever, yeah. Yeah. But it's just too much. You don't need to monitor kids so much. Mm. And they will rebel. My kids never rebel because. I took the fun out of. I said, even if you cut class and go to a movie, just let me know you are at <laughs> Sangeet or what were those theaters? Or. So I took the fun out of rebellion. So they never rebelled. Right. Yeah. Because you were not strict about anything. No. I just said, because let me know. Your, because they were young. I said, just let me know. I need to know if you are partying or something. Let me know what time you will come home. Mm. That, mm. That's the only thing. You are such a practical parent. Yeah, I am very practical. Very, very practical. Yeah. It's very, dif- very, very difficult to see people like you nowadays. Uh, and my mom did that, but she doesn't let me do it. That's so <laughs> I get so surprised that both my mom and dad say kids are your priority. Kids are your priority. You I mean, do so many things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you mean kids are a priority? Kids are a priority for, for any, any mother. Yeah, they're a priority for yeah, any mother. No matter what. The reel will obviously rush home, and you'll cancel the shooting, and right. you know, you'll Wait, do that. Today evening, I have like two major programs happening, but because. I have to spend time with my kids. I cancel all of them. After four, I'm not going out anywhere, and I have like really big meetings, like career changing meetings. Mm-hmm. But still, I'm dropping because back of my mind, it's then kids are like conditioning. <laughs> are they very tiny? They're not tiny. Nine and seven. Little bit. They need more. <laughs> but uh, you need to. No, there's no need to cancel any meeting. Yeah, but that's the uh, sad part. That's that the conditioning. That's the conditioning. Yeah. And but but even my mom, there were eight kids. Do you think her mother used to sit and monitor eight of them? Yeah, I yeah, don't think that yeah, was the case yeah. those days. Even they were very free. When last two generations have been really. Uh, you think? Yeah, you're right. I've never thought of this. Just imagine eight kids. Will she have time to cook for those kids? Yeah. <laughs> Just monitor and babysit those yeah, kids. Yeah. Like I, I don't. I haven't seen the past two generations being uh, that particular about the kids. But whereas when it comes to us, probably this whole thing of achieving something. My kid needs to go to Harvard. My need, kid needs to go to Boston School. You know, I think that whole pressure they need to do well. Mm. That's another thing. We don't have to be obsessed. Happiness is not a goal. That you have to be a kind person. I mean, look at the world. What we have done to the world. So what is it you're teaching kids? You know, getting an MBA and getting into some high tech, I mean, IT thing is not the goal really. But that has become the goal. My kid has to do well. You know, he has to be a success. What is success according to you? So many kids I know, the parents have pushed them into IITs. They've had breakdowns and they burn out much faster. You know, the whole pressure of this totally schools. So one of them had a breakdown. I mean, not one. Like, there's so many yes, of them going through. Somebody, a very close friend of mm. mine. So just because the dad is from IIT doesn't mean you know your kid is going to go to IIT or you know going to do medicine. And just because you have a degree like that doesn't mean you'll get an uh, get an awesome job with an amazing yeah. pay and a yeah. wife. 
who is guaranteeing all of this? Yeah. They are yeah. all different life skills all together. So this is the trajectory that you know if you do well, you will you know you get a good job, you will get a good pretty wife, <laughs> <laughs> you will have perfect children. The typical thing you know, in the US they have you know, two right. kids, right. car and two cars, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. But these are okay, I mean ask me because these things come and go. That's why I wanted your perspective on this yeah. because it's like I feel the burden. I mean when I am doing so much, I am feeling it. Imagine a lot of mothers don't even come out to get one career out there. So for them, also because conditioning in-laws must be saying, husband must be saying. That's why I keep writing about patriarchy. I mean, more than my, you know, I think my mother, my parents are like, I'm very <laughs> happy with my mother. You know, she <laughs> she's very cool. But parents still put the burden so much on the. I don't want to go till the in-laws. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that is true. The older generation they put so much pressure. And they don't. They're not looking at themselves. Okay, what we have done, we never were uh, monitored like that. But yeah. this generation is exposed to. So much burden. Yeah. So you feel that, is it? Is I that why that. You, your channel that's supposed yeah, to support you? Yeah, I feel that because people just chill. <laughs> Motherhood is just one phase. Right. I'm saying, yeah, this is not the be all and end all of your life. There are other things to you. Become a writer, become do something, become a dentist. Like <laughs> do something. I mean, that's when you realize yourself. What? So people think by having good kids, you're, you know, you they may it makes you as a person, which is not true. Just because I have two great kids, it doesn't mean I'm great. I mean, tell me what you have done. Mm. Yeah. And also for your son, the career that you have chosen is like... I have not chosen, he chose himself. <laughs> you, the way you supported him. Being a DJ, when yeah. he told... As long as he doesn't get a tattoo, I don't mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you don't want tattoo. tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually we, uh, my husband's family was related to MS election. So I'm thinking uh-huh. his whole thing of music mm. has come out this way. Probably these g- kids were, you know, exposed to western music. And that's how that came about. But he has a regular job too. He works with the Apollo Group. Okay. He's a CEO of a, this thing. But uh, how would anyone think that is possible? Like, so MS Balishmi is here and DJ is like. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, but the kind of music he plays is also very meditative. I mean, he I have listened to some of his stuff and I go some of his shows. It is quite sweet. He calls me on stage and gives me a hug. He says, DJs wait for their mothers to come and uh, hear them. I mean, here you come out for the first or second one. I've taken my friends. Awesome. Take it, yeah. That's so beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, you supported him right away. Did he decide? Like he's he's working as a CEO for in Apollo One Branch. But when he said, "I want to do shows like this," no, he started doing. I, I believe that's what he said in an interview that used to play for his friends in any case. Uh-huh. So now he tried to professionalize it. So said. how did you support him? But let him go out in the night, I guess. <laughs> let him go out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've always been free. I mean, I said, whatever you do, do it well. Mm. I mean, no half measures. Mm-hmm. I mean, even if he had wanted to be a carpenter, but do it well. Mm. Be, you know, true to your profession, which is what I find about writers, if you're asking my opinion. Nobody has the passion. I mean, even now, after I've, I've been in journalism for 30 years, I still enjoy it. I just still love it. You know, if I came to interview you, you know, I just feel so happy. But nowadays, the kids don't have that enthusiasm. You just have to challenge me and I'll do it. If somebody, like Dr. Reddy said, no, nobody will read a doctor's message, challenge me. I will do it. <laughs> In that way, you are like me. Yeah. And give me a challenge, I'll make I'll it happen. I'll make it happen. <laughs> don't, otherwise, I get bored. <laughs> With so, when um, WOW was launched, it was a challenge. Now, it's got its templates. You know, setting that initial template, what should go into it, even the design, that is important. Any of these magazines. True. Mm-hmm. Now I think anybody can come and take over WOW. I keep thinking, please take it. I want youngsters to come and take it. You know, to have practicality like yours, that makes a lot of difference. When and I know even, a, now I tell them, oh, this place is happening, it seems, a nightlife. How will I know? You kids should know. <laughs> because of my son, of course, I know all these things. Right. I said, go cover it. They should be, like that thing, you know, the, getting the pulse is very important. And timing, like I said. Right. So you have a natural knack for it. After I so think many I've been years. trained well. Yeah, right. I've been trained well. So like this uh, Chevella banyan trees, mm. she didn't want to do that, she wanted to do I said, this is the thing which is the talk of the town, the banyan trees they say. True. I said, do a story on that. Mm. So, so this, this was exactly my next question. Uh, how do you spot which articles to pick on? Or, you know, you pick up like really good people the, in the law. US they used to tell us, mm. you to eavesdrop. Like here now I'll get four ideas by mm. meeting you people. Mm. So I'm always looking for a story, what can make a good story. And then of course you have to read the papers. Nowadays I find my, none of my staff reads papers. You have to, I read about four papers, Sundays, that's how I get ideas. For, I do three magazines, people say, how do you get so many ideas? Right. I don't know, I have more, I have more ideas. Like one, being editor yeah. of one thing itself is so taxing. Yeah. Yeah. And like, look at this. I think I have that many ideas, maybe I'm uh, that like, you know, great. I mean, I don't know. I just eavesdrop, I listen to people, and I also, meet people, you know, then you get a lot of ideas. Like, how do you spot talent? 
like you know to feature someone you have like featured articles and all of that and most of the time all of them are so interesting every time you look at them we like wow this is a good one every time there's something really good how do you spot so talent? probably people who have done different things like you run this channel so that's something different that's what they say you know when dog bites man is not news but when a man dog bites a dog is news so we look for the unusual <laughs> <laughs> so look for the unusual do people who are doing you know different things right so for our mothers who are watching uh if they have to grow in life all our life we have trained like okay do this do this only then you will be successful but what you are saying is exactly opposite do something different and then you will be spotted so i want that message so to even, go out very strong even for your own growth be different don't be i mean if you have no inclination to be a dentist there's no point you sitting here and suffering and so many of my writers are very good ones were actually trained as engineers then i said why did you do engineering he said ma'am the you know my parents forced me to do and they're lovely writers so they don't even let them become writers which is a very sad thing actually. i was saying um, all our life we are told okay do this you will be successful but actual when you come into real life and when you look at magazines or any of these places none of them are doing the right they're not doing the right thing yeah. no one no, is an engineer no, no, it guy exactly you know in every week i have not seen a single it person feature on any yeah, of right. <laughs> thought of it but there is a start up looking, which is a success or something like right, that right but otherwise all our life we condition into only one thing because you know why society doesn't like the deviants they don't want rebels i mean i'm always criticizing something that people don't want they want you to listen to things and be the norm mm. which is what schools also do they you know my children used to ask questions they'll say no don't ask these questions just be like everybody else so this being like everybody else is what is killing you mm. which is stopping you from being creative so uh, if a mother if not for herself like okay obviously they have a second chance even after the kids grow up they sh- they should once the kids start going into full time school i think they should pick up jobs personally i feel they should not it's such a hu- last human potential human potential yeah like imagine i feel everyone is capable of such something or the other and that person is sitting at home after the kid goes to school okay when the child is really young yes it's understandable but if at all they want to get back to something some job or something that they want to do so uh, they don't get back uh how should they get back i'm i'm asking your opinion on it this depending on even like we always feature all these pickle makers and you know people who make cakes from home so do something which also where you can also you know concentrate on the kids but if you if you're so smart and you're a doctor you should go ahead and do it what i'm saying is there's no need to sacrifice anything for kids and they're not going to bless you or anything like that <laughs> okay well, now it is there's no respect also at least in older generation they'll respect now it is ye to kuch bhi nahi karte you don't know anything yeah. you have been telling me respect you more because you're a doctor i'm telling you 10 years down the line you'll remember me as a teenager they'll be so proud of you that my mom does so many things like both my boys they think i'm a queen there's a queen amma queen amma we can see everywhere i'm meeting some have or i come home with something yeah so they're proud of that they're so proud yeah, of it yeah. they can really so do you want that kind of mom or somebody who's weepy and whiny and bored at home so you don't want that but the conditioning is happening yeah. exactly the opposite way that's a challenge they, i think they don't want women to have their own mind careers <laughs> get me off this chair <laughs> I'm too radical for this. <laughs> no, no, no. This is yeah. exactly what the society like. Though doesn't like deviant. Some mother who does it, but children-wise, if that's what you say, they'll be much more proud. Mm. My kids are so proud of me that you know, whatever I do. So I've never sacrificed. And I've been a single mom. In fact, I didn't get onto that. Mm. So it, it's it's it was very tough. But my parents helped a lot. I mean, they keep those days. I used to do house calls. I used to travel all over the country and abroad. Wow. Like uh, once someone loses their husband. they lose they think the life is gone they mm. don't do, they don't indulge in yeah, anything yeah. else so that's again they, another challenge to <laughs> i said nobody's going to ignore me and you don't know how many people in town drop me so mm. my husband was a big shot in dr reddy's and all that mm. so i i said i'm not going to let that life defeat me so that's what i say that life itself will take a course you know like, will teach you things can you repeat that again i will not let life defeat me yeah i will not let life life defeat me i don't know from where i got the strength also that is again probably because of the kids they were 9 and 11 i said for these kids i will be normal and in fact they're so happy and jolly in fact <laughs> i never let reality strike them that they didn't have a dad such a beautiful thing yeah, yeah. ratna because uh, but i don't think of it as sacrifice i'm not expecting them to do anything for me no i i did it because i wanted to do it for them i wanted to be there for them and then but i also was in a profession where i enjoyed myself so i never thought of it as a uh, you know sacrifice this whole thing of sacrifice should go from telugu movies and hindi movies 
<laughs> I sacrifice so much for my kids. And every movie talks about a sacrificial yeah. mother. And it's become little less now right? <laughs> than old times that yeah. Nirupa Roy and all crying away. Oh, so it's become little less. Yeah, it's like now. much more better. Yeah. <laughs> Mothers. Yeah. Otherwise, the, the stereotypical image of mother means the sacrificial lamb. Yeah. I yeah. think I don't think it's a sacrifice. I yeah. feel they're actually training you to become a sacrificial yeah. lamb. Yeah. And then uh, mother-in-law means she's someone who's troubling. Troubling. That's the image that the, nice <laughs> the movies have uh, yeah. told. But yeah. I don't think nowadays it's not true yeah. anymore. Yeah. When you go through really tough times, that's part of life, right? Yeah, it's part of life. It's part of when life. When something nice happens to us, like we get a Mercedes, we didn't say, why, God, why did you give me a Mercedes? But when something bad happens, God, why did you let this happen to me? And I think most, this is the most important message, if I can. Health is the most important thing. Everything else is a bonus. Whatever else you have in life is a bonus. Main thing, if health is gone, you had it. So in our Million Moms, the 21 days challenge that we do, it's all about health. Oh. My focus is, just take care of your health. Yeah. You are the focus. Yeah. Please take care of yeah. your health. Yeah. If you have that, everything else will Fit fall in place. Yeah. So no matter what, just get out. Which also, yeah, which also is mental health, I think. Right. You go out, meet mm. people. Yeah, I think go on, go for exercise, go for a walk, spend time for yourself, yourself. exclusively. Yeah, yeah. You know, the whole thing of saying I don't have time because my kids are there. No one has time, no? Yeah. Do yeah. you have time? Yeah. Do you ever have excess time? No. I don't have time. Most of us don't have time. But we make time for ourselves. I make time <laughs> to read and all that. So how do you make time for yourself, Ratna? I sometimes just sit at home, I'll just go underground. Like today I've mingled and <laughs> this thing, so tomorrow I'll be like off. I'll just take off that much. Hmm. I think that mental, I get exhausted mentally sometimes. Mm. So I need to take off rest. Rest means that I'll do, you know, read or do something. Mm. This thing. Also, I don't socialize that much. So that that gives me a lot of time, I think. Mm. You know, I, I realize now my social activities are becoming a little more. I go for art shows and some openings, this, that. So then the whole evening is gone. Right. Then, you know, so, it's, so mm. something you have to cut, I feel. So uh, do you exercise every day? Or walks only. I am not walks. a huge yeah. exercise person. So, uh, and I do meditation, yoga, and little yeah. bit. Can you talk about that? Why do you do it? I need to center myself because you know you can get carried away. Oh wow, I'm so famous. I'm editor. Wow, you can get carried away by all this. So I need that little bit, and I do little chanting. I've learned that Vedic chanting. You so uh, I do that. Right. So like one hour in the mornings is for me, but which means I have to get up early. <laughs> you know, before everybody else. So uh, another thing I say is, don't think you have to get up early to do things. Whenever you wake up, just make time for yourself. Yeah. If, because a lot of people think, okay, I have to get up early. Because I didn't get, get up early, I can't, I can't do this activity. I say, it's okay. You wake up at 11 o'clock, perfectly okay. No. Do something <laughs> at 11 o'clock. <laughs> Obviously, that's not possible for moms. But as an example, it's okay. Yeah, even yeah. if you wake up at 11 o'clock, do one hour of something for yourself and then get into life. And even eat. I think parents sacrifice. I mean, mothers sacrifice. Don't eat the proper food. Are you conscious about your diet and... What yeah. do your habits like? I'm very conscious now, cut down a lot of sugars. Because I realized that, you know, better to do it the natural way than take medicines. Can you give some diet tips? <laughs> I don't have any diet tips. Eat like, I like this Rujita Divakar who says, whatever your grandparents say it is right. So I will have, pop I have ghee, I have all those things. But in moderation, I don't eat like one mountain of biryani or anything. Like so it's okay. So I think a lot of, in fact, somebody told me strangely that she's so confused with all these diet restrictions. I believe she said, I stopped eating anything. <laughs> I think that is another thing. Right. We need to the other deal side of with. the coin. Yeah. yeah. People have become too obsessed. You know, I should eat this, I shouldn't eat this. Mm. So they're so highly confused, which is also part of the media is confusing them, I think. Here, what I believe is, hmm. uh, if someone has a challenge, in certain area, especially with respect to food, they'll give you something which is completely different from the norm. That is only for that particular case. You can't apply something which is given for someone who has that amount of weight and apply it to your own oh, case. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is no common recipe for everyone saying that you need to do this. And when they're giving a special diet, for example, a keto diet, a protein-based yeah. diet or whatever, it is because it's an abnormality. As a normal person, don't try to inculcate yeah, yeah, that into yeah, your yeah, diet. Yeah. And it's a customized thing. You can't ask people, okay, you lost weight, can you tell me your diet? I'll do it. And that thing should be done under supervision, right? It has to keto be done under Because they go into ketosis. And no matter yeah. what kind of so diet. So people are not following. doing that. They'll just do on, you know, what is that? Internet. Internet. <laughs> Google search. And Google start and doing app. that. Yeah. And we get a lot of requests. Mom, can you give me a diet? Mom, I'm breastfeeding. Can you give diet? I'm like, diet? Why do you want a diet for a breastfeeding mother? Like, I don't get that. So I want people to understand that it's not key. Maybe isn't there something they have to eat extra? to feed a baby? Uh, not much. 300 calories, not more than that. 
but still they want to cut down they want to lose weight and get back to fit uh, oh, oh they want to lose they want to lose weight even if they have delivered a child they just want to like get back yeah. to their so that's why one of these i wrote that i i mean i, I admire all this mm. ashwara rai went to kan when she had put on weight mm. and she said this is the face of motherhood mm. and i will enjoy it i'm not going to become like she put on a lot of weight right yeah so she uh, karina all those people i think they are role model i think we need to talk more of this i think that's what samira reddy is doing yes she is doing exactly that, uh, perfectly you know, this, perfect campaign uh, uh, right this whole thing of being that you have to be perfect mm. as a mother as a editor of a magazine called nari where you are you're talking to women who are going through pregnancy and post birth are there any moments that you want to share anything that you felt wow people should know about this about pregnancy uh, about pregnancy this body shaming was what struck me because i had never thought of it till mm. samira came out and spoke about it mm. they are going to put on weight obviously you know you're carrying a human being so i think they shouldn't obsess but we do other things and fernandes promotes mm. natural births water births right so they don't want interventions of the doctors too much intervention i mean unless it is an emergency or something like that. i agree i believe you also yeah i'm part yeah. of a natural birth center and that's exactly what's needed and thank god fernandez as a mainstream hospital mainstream is promoting hospital, yeah. yeah because yeah. we are a midwife led center for Which us one is this? sanctum nat- healthy mother okay uh, i'm i'm one of the partners there but what i'm very happy about is it's not sideline yeah, thanks to fernandez it's coming to the yeah. uh, mainstream midwives yeah even i was surprised which is why i thought i should do this right. for them but i give them a mixture of various women oriented issues exactly yeah. so any story which struck you like really strong in all these years not uh, this this is just two six issues over yeah but in all these years of your journalism and editorial journey uh, was there any any story which stood out very very strongly for you no generally i find the poorer and uh, poorer they are the more humble i mean i've seen the poorest people in rajasthan but they will give you the two rotis which i've not found in all the glamour people i mean that is very touching those are the things i've learned and somebody like john, when you're really really somebody of standing like john nash i met him he was so humble he took me all over that uh, watan or that school he so even uh, ayengar the ayengar this desika char so yeah. the bigger you are the more humble and you know you act like an ordinary person i noticed this it's a chota mota people who are full of airs <laughs> and but this thing of that lady giving me like two rotis and i know she can't afford that you know she's utter poverty of rajasthan but she wanted to share that meal and i think it's a very indian thing that they want to share this and i noticed that the bigger you are the smaller i mean the more humble mm. they are truly so both truly things great. are actually very humble yeah yeah it's, mm. it's our middle mm. this thing and i i mean for me all these things come and go it's all passing i mean to think we just because i have a mercedes that you're somebody great i mean <laughs> It's just these are all passing things, material things which come and go. I think finally we have to teach kids or ourselves that inner resilience. Can I handle this? Like right now, you know, this whole confusion about cars. I mean, it depends. I did, you know, it get, makes me mad sometimes to handle. But how do you handle these things? That's what you need to teach kids. I mean, life is not like one smooth sailing. They will face several things. And it's all part of life. Life, yeah. See, that's why it's called as life. No, there are ups and downs. Yeah, ups and it, downs. It can never be up. It so can never be down. Can, yeah, all that you can teach is give them the strength and the confidence that I can handle it to the best of their ability. That's what I think we should. I mean, it's okay. Your kid is MBA, my kid is not. But doesn't matter. <laughs> and they will be, you know, failures. They will not always succeed. What and about these comparisons that mothers do? Like, okay, what did your son do? What did you know? In a social setting, they're always comparing and they asking. Should, yeah. something special so you tell between two kids there's a lot of comparison yeah siblings also i don't think we mean is it common that's really i mean it's going to traumatize the kids it's going to traumatize you also hmm so a lot of things which i don't like i'll just keep away keep myself away from these things because i don't believe in these things so if you have toxic people around you you make sure you're not there in their circle or i won't participate you won't participate yeah mm-hmm. if you say oh hinduism is great but all other religions religions are great So I don't participate because I know this is a very controversial thing right now. So mm. I don't participate in discussions like mm. this. I'm so trying not to. That's a very uh, yeah. That's a very uh, because smart I hold my opinion. Like. Uh, yeah, I will do what I want. But just because I'm doing yoga, you say, oh, she's a rabid Hindu twa. I mean, now all they just say all sorts of things. <laughs> it's up to you what you believe. Because uh, most of the time our energy is either drained yeah, by yeah, people around yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. How Some do we really drain me? Yeah. So how do you shield yourself from that? I don't know if you can you shield yourself I'm not sure but you can go and recharge or try not to beat them mm. for me sure. personally I cut people out of my life <laughs> I'm going to say it. yeah I I guess but you can't avoid na some people you're working with 
yeah but it, yeah. it's not healthy for your emotions or it's just one thing i think mothers need not you know mothers or anybody woman doesn't have to be negative this whole thing of you know i don't have this so okay if you don't have it though you don't have it doesn't mean that you know you have to moan and groan over it this whole thing of moaning and groaning and whining should go hmm but i think so this whole thing i don't have totally, this, see like, what you have what the many things you have see uh, you can you can have two kinds of mentality one is a victim mentality or a growth mentality victim, yeah, yeah. yeah. so victim is someone who's come continuously complaining blaming criticizing yeah, yeah. someone who's doing all these three things will never look at the positive aspect of life yeah that growth mindset person is focusing at no one has everything right no Absolutely. one has yeah. everything yeah. sorted yeah. that is a given yeah. but with whatever i have can i start focusing on the things which are really going well in my life yeah I there can be 101 things yeah. I can be grateful about yeah. versus one or two things which are going wrong. Yeah. I can't make those one or two things my life yeah. and neglect the 101 good things which are happening. Like you look at nature, there's so much abundance that nature is offering. If the nature starts thinking, oh, why should I give them? What did they give me back yeah, in yeah. return? It will be all <laughs> it <is> zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I feel um, I think that's a good uh, message. Yeah. So let's not look at what others have. Let's see what we have. And all of us have some blessing. I mean, it sounds too this thing, but. we do have something maybe our health or you know totally yeah. every person our has something be, yeah affectionate or something must be there yeah if we just look around we'll so find it so look at it. that tk if your son didn't get into it it's okay he must be having some other plus point encourage that i mean this whole thing in andhra of kids committing suicide i think that's ridiculous what is it that you're teaching kids that they have to commit suicide because you failed some 10th class or 12th class i mean that needs to be taken very seriously yeah so that i think that's because of the pressure we are putting on kids it was amazing to have you here with us uh, not just because of you uh, from, from all the people that we have had as guests you as is the most practical one till date i hope it was not too radical it's not radical but the way you're putting it without any um, there there is no ribbons there is no putting an icing on top of it you're just saying it as it is very very simple no, and easy way to my character people always say that she says it like it is no <laughs> no <laughs> sugar coating yeah no sugar coating thank you so much ratna for You're taking welcome. this time and for bearing with I us we've been planning this for so long i know yeah yeah thanks for your time take up the 21 days challenge log in to www.millionmoms.in for more details contact 77024 91010